Welcome to Charts Today, my name is David Linton and today's edition for Monday the 16th of November comes to you from the Canary Islands where I'm still just escaping for some winter sun. So um, we start by looking at the dollar, it's sinking lower the last couple of days so we're still bearish on all three time frames with these downside targets. So that's a theme, uh, weaker dollar which ultimately could lead to stronger commodities which we'll take a look at. That means the euro is looking stronger, uh, and if we look at uh, the dollar against the yen, we're seeing it 104. So we're just gradually sinking lower, and that's really showing up in that dollar yen chart. Sterling is sitting at 132 against that dollar weakness, and so we are just seeing it looking uh, better on the medium and long term charts, just trending up gradually. Short term, we're still not quite back above the cloud, but it does look like we'll go higher this week. Uh, looking at sterling against the euro, we're sitting at 111.35. Brexit negotiations uh, in focus at the moment, but uh, Sterling's still just struggling on the short-term chart. Uh, taking a look at Bitcoin, we're sitting at $16,200, so on the long term we're still looking very, very strong indeed. Short term it looked like we found some support on the cloud, so we've got some still pretty big targets to play for. US stock market last week, we saw the S&P 500 index close up on Friday. That has led to a weekly candle doji. I mean, that's really unusual on a weekly chart. So we have got this weekly doji there. That could be a bearish sign when you see that at the top of a chart. And we're just struggling really to hold this long-term high. So we do need to be aware of that. Having said that, we've got lots of upside targets on the 1% uh, uh, chart. So uh, for the moment, the market is... Um, Still looking like it will push to new highs. The Nasdaq struggled again last week, uh, and we just can't manage to break to new highs. So that's a, uh, that high that we saw at the beginning of September. We still not got back above that, and that will be key for the market. Until that happens, we do have downside targets hanging over us. The Dow was higher as well. The futures today are up, so we're seeing the S&P future up 0.6%. The Nasdaq E-mini up 0.5%. It does suggest the markets will start the week stronger when they open in the U.S. today. VIX volatility sitting at 23.70. It's uh, looking better in terms of, the, remember, the VIX is a fear index, so the, the lower the VIX, the better it is for the market, and that's looking better as well. The FTSE future this morning in the UK is up quarter of a percent, and the DAX in Germany is up quarter of a percent on the cash market. The CAC current looking stronger, up 0.63%, uh, so we are just seeing it holding on to those gains in the recent jump. Uh, and if we look at uh, Tokyo, we we're at 1.7% there, so that's looking better as well. Hang Seng was up 0.86%, and the Chinese market was up 1%. Uh, and if we look at the Sensex, we we're up half percent there, and the Aussie market was up one and a quarter percent. So all in all, we're seeing a pretty strong start to equity markets this week. Gold sitting at 1894 just struggling to really get motoring. Of course, as markets are looking better generally, gold is not necessarily a beneficiary of that. The weaker dollar might have an impact here, um, but we are, interestingly, we are just coming off the floor. A new low for gold would be bad. It would activate the downside target. Looking at silver, similar picture here, uh, and US 10-year yields sitting at 0.88%. So we've really seen a lot of volatility in the 10-year yield. Um, and we are just looking a little bit more into um, bearish territory this week there for the short term. Looking at the energy mix now, Brent crude is up 1.7% this morning, but we do have this range. We're going to break above that 45.30 level. If we break below 42.70, then that would be bearish for crude. So we're just going to really wait for the break. We've got targets in both directions. The same is true of WTI. We're waiting for this target to be activated. Looking at US nat gas, we're sitting at 2.87. We did break lower today, so that's really significant. Back to the support level, if that breaks, we've got uh, targets lower still, so that's really quite key, uh, and we just need to keep an eye out there. Uh, looking at Arbob, that's up 1.4% in line with crude. Uh, coal is looking better for recovery, and we're seeing here, it might be hitting some resistance on the cloud on the daily chart, but we are seeing here that we are seeing an improvement and, and recovery, and we've got upside targets to play for. <clears throat> Emissions up 1.5% this morning. We've called for them breaking higher this week. We've got multiple upside targets. We need to break this 27.20 level. Uh, that will be key. Looking at uh, UK power, UK gas, uh, we're looking still in trend here, but just a little bit weaker on the 60-minute chart. TTF looking stronger, breaking higher this morning, breaking out of this basing triangle pattern. We've gone bullish for gas markets this week, and we're seeing the same with the seasonal. Looking at German power, 
Uh, we're nudging this 40 euro mark now, and we think we would probably break that this week with good multiple upside targets here. So keeping an eye on that. Nordic Power, the real story, down massively this morning. How low can Nordic Power go? We've got a massive target here to 13 lower. This 1406 target was given and met. So um, that's really significant. Uh, so keep an eye out for that this week. Until tomorrow, happy charting. See you then.